Hi, welcome to the video. This seems like a pretty easy question to answer, right? I mean, we all learned that Dmitry Mendeleev made the periodic table, right? Well, yes and no. Let me explain. It is true that Dmitry Mendeleev would be the first to publish what would become the modern periodic table, but there were a lot more people involved in the process of making the periodic table we see today. This story starts in about the 1860s with about four different scientists trying to categorize the 60 or so elements that were known at that time. The first attempt was in 1862 by, I'm gonna mess this up, Alexandre Emilia Bigurier de Tarancourtis. At least I tried, right? And when he plotted the atomic weight of each element on a paper tape and wound them around a cylinder object. This is also known as the telluric helix or the telluric screw. The second attempt was by John Newland in 1864. He noticed that there were similarities in every seventh element, so he created a law of octaves. However, John Newlands didn't leave any room for future elements in his table, which was the main flaw in his idea. The last two people we'll talk about actually had very similar ideas. However, they didn't work together, nor did they even really know about each other's work until they had published already. First, in 1868, Lothar Meyer actually made a table pretty similar to the one we use today. But his work wasn't actually published until 1870. Then the last person we'll talk about was Dmitry Mendeleev in 1869. He also based the elements off of atomic weight, but he also left holes open for future elements. Mendeleev also predicted some of the future elements using other elements on the table. Mendeleev's table was not perfect. However, throughout the years, more and more people have accepted it. This also includes Lothar Meyer, who actually couldn't publish his because of a publisher delay. Could you imagine how he felt? Like, not only did he get beat in publishing it, but he also isn't even remembered in, like, history or anything. That's gotta suck. Even then, over the next few decades, lots and lots of scientists came together to improve on Mendeleev's periodic table. Even if the table had opposition, it was able to form into newer and newer versions. The first change happened in 1894 with the discovery of the noble gases. Then a major change actually happened in 1913 when Henry Moseley actually used x-rays to find the atomic number of every element. This actually caused the periodic table to be arranged from atomic weight to atomic number, the one we use today. It is also important to note that Mendeleev knew there needed to be a change because elements like iodine and tellurium wouldn't actually work with atomic weight, but he didn't really know what needed to change. The last great change happened in 1944 when Glenn Seberg introduced the actinide hypothesis. This hypothesis and the updated periodic table actually added the lanthanide and actinide series. You know, the ones that are in the periodic table itself. All of these changes combined actually ended up creating the modern periodic table we know today. Well, excluding the constant adding of elements. I really think it's cool how Mendeleev's periodic table was able to last so long. And I really think the main reason for that it was because that's how he made it. He made it with holes so that people were able to add elements in there and he actually predicted some elements. It's like he predicted the future, not really. And I really think that's why Mendeleev is like the main credit behind the periodic table. I mean, we all learned about him in high school chemistry, so there's gotta be some truth about it. But it's also good to look at the other people and other scientists that actually helped create the modern periodic table with the different revisions and additions. I've always heard science is a group effort. Guess it's really true. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to catch the next video. Let me know in the comments, isn't it kind of messed up that Lothar Meyer doesn't give any credit for the periodic table? I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.